you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question before listening on. Our first step would be to draw a simple picture that represents the given information. So the red vector represents the initial velocity of the soccer ball, which is 10.2 meters per second, and it's kicked at an angle of 25 degrees above the horizontal. Next, what we want to do is create a table that will help us organize the information that's relevant to this problem. So in this table, we have the x and y directions along the top, and then we have the initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, time, and displacement. What we're going to do first to fill in the table is to take the initial velocity of 10.2 meters per second and break it into its x and y components. Now the x component would be pointing along the horizontal direction and then the y component is pointing up the vertical direction. We have a right triangle here and in order to find the x component we would note that this side of the triangle is the adjacent side so we would be using the cosine function. We would say that the cosine of the 25 degree angle is equal to the adjacent which is the initial velocity in the x direction over the hypotenuse, which is marked as 10.2. If we solve that equation for the initial velocity in the x direction, we would have 10.2 cos 25. And in a similar way, we would be able to determine that the initial velocity in the y direction is 10.2 times the sine of 25. Now, part A of the question is asking about a time of 0.25 seconds, so we could fill that in for both the x direction and the y direction. The acceleration in the x direction in most projectile motion questions will be 0 meters per second squared, and then in the y direction it'll be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And the question is asking us for the final velocity, so we can put little question marks here for the x and the y, and we're going to make it our goal to find those two question marks. So why don't we go ahead and find the x direction final velocity first, and we know that we could use the following equation from kinematics. We would have the final velocity in the x direction is equal to the initial velocity in the x direction plus acceleration times time. Now recall the acceleration in the x direction is zero, so that would actually knock away this term, and we could see that the final velocity in the x direction is equal to the initial velocity in the x direction. So we can actually just go ahead and fill in 10.2 cosine of 25 in for the final velocity in the x direction. For the y direction, we would use the same equation have the final velocity in the y direction equals the initial in the y direction plus the acceleration times the time. We could fill in the initial velocity in the y direction which was the 10.2 times the sine of 25 and then we'll add that to the acceleration of negative 9.8 multiplied by the time of 0.25 seconds. And when we process that on our calculators we get 1.86 meters per second so this would be the final velocity in the y direction. Now, the question wants the overall final velocity. So we have a component in the x direction and a component in the y direction. Let's take those components and draw a triangle. So in the x direction, our final velocity again is 10.2 cosine of 25. And in the y direction, it's 1.86. Notice that because both final velocities are positive, we have pointed them in the rightward direction for the x component and the upward direction for the y component. We can now use the Pythagorean theorem to find the magnitude of the final velocity. So once you simplify the right hand side and then take the square root of both sides, your magnitude should come out to roughly 9.43 meters per second. So this would be the magnitude of the final velocity for the direction we would simply want to be looking for this angle right here and we can see that we could actually use the tangent function because we know that the tangent of that angle would equal the opposite side of 1.86 over the adjacent of 10.2 cos 25 and then to actually get the angle we would have to do the inverse tangent so the angle would be the inverse tangent of this fraction here which works out to be about 0.2 and so when you plug in the inverse tangent of 0.2, you get roughly 11.4 degrees. So this would be the correct answer for the direction of the final velocity. So part A is now solved. And we're going to go on to part B and basically do the same thing, except we're changing the time to 0.5 seconds. And so we'll go back to our projectile motion table. The initial velocity is still the same. We'll just change the time to 0.5 seconds. Now by the same reasoning, the final velocity in the x direction is going to be the same. It's 10.2 cosine of 25. We'll have to go back to this kinematics formula to find the final velocity in the y direction. 
And so plugging in the initial velocity in the y direction, and then the acceleration, and then the new time of 0.5 gives us a value will come up here of roughly negative 0.589 so that's the final velocity in the y direction and so we're going to have to come back and draw a different triangle and the reason it's going to look different is because the final velocity in the y direction is negative so in the x direction we have a final velocity of positive 10.2 cosine of 25 and because it's positive we're pointing it to the right the final velocity in the y direction again is negative, so we've projected it in a downward direction. We would use Pythagorean theorem one more time to solve for v. And when we do that, we get approximately 9.26 meters per second. So this would be the correct answer for the magnitude of the final velocity. We also have to find the angle. And just like before, we can use the inverse tangent. So that angle is going to be the inverse tangent of the opposite side of negative 0.589 divided by the adjacent side of 10.2 cosine of 25. And when we solve for that, we get approximately negative 3.65 degrees. So that would be the correct answer for the final direction. The final magnitude was 9.26 meters per second. And so part B is solved. Part C asks, is the ball at its greatest height before or after 0.5 seconds? And the correct answer to that is going to turn out to be before, and the reason is as follows. If we look at the final velocity in the y direction after a time of 0.5 seconds, we can see that it's negative. And a negative final velocity in the y direction means that this uh, soccer ball is actually traveling downward. And so that means that if we go back to the original picture and sort of draw a parabolic path of the soccer ball, the maximum height would be right here. And in our case, the ball is moving downward at a time of 0.5 seconds. So this would represent the ball moving downward. That means that before 0.5 seconds, right about here, is when the ball would have reached its maximum height. Notice that at that maximum height, the final velocity in the y direction would have been zero meters per second because it's not moving upward at that moment and nor is it moving downward. And so the fact that the final velocity was negative at a time of 0.5 seconds means that the ball was traveling downward and therefore it must have reached its maximum height at a time before the 0.5 seconds. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please subscribe and also send in your own question to this email address and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.